Wednesday, August the 21st. Uh, they've got the floodgates shut off on the lake, so the lake's still coming down, but it's coming down a lot slower than it was. They're just doing normal generation now. But the lake level's right at 917, which is, uh, you know, normal power pool. For a long time, we've been calling power pool 915, but a couple years ago, the Corps of Engineers raised it up to 917. So they've, uh, they've recently changed it. If you go to the uh, Corps of Engineers, Lake level on Table Rock, you'll see normal power pull at 917. So that's kind of what we're going to go by. But at 917, there's quite a bit of stuff in the water. You know, there's most any place you go, the bush has got about two feet of water in it. And the water temperature in the mornings is about 81, 82 degrees. Uh, now, yesterday afternoon, I was up in the upper river late in the day, and it, I found some 85, 86 degree water. But for the most part, you know, the main lakes, you know, 82, 83 degrees. And with the water slowing down, I actually think the bite's picked up. Uh, it's got a lot more consistent. Now, there's, uh, like I say, there's a couple feet of water in the bushes. I've still been catching some fish, you know, on a, uh, a sweet beaver, some on a pig sticker jig up in the buck brush and around the willows, and even some on a frog. But my, my shallow bite's real inconsistent. I mean, I've got to be in the creeks, uh, preferably in the river arms where the water's stained. And speaking of the water being stained, the river arms right now look look excellent. I mean, the, it's got good water color. There's hardly no debris out there floating around. Uh, most of the mud color is gone, so uh, the rivers really look good. You know, I was up in Long Creek a couple days ago. I was up in the James today. And... Uh, like I say, it, it, the, the color really looks good. There's a lot of bait fish up on the flats, on the shallow flats. Uh, I've been catching some of them on a, on a square bill. Uh, like an RC 2.5 or a 1.5, and I've been using kind of a splatterback color. Here's a 2.5. I've been using a, also a 1.5. And I've got a little Strike King 1.5 here that Fall Creek Lures has, did a custom paint job on. This one seems to be working about the best. But it, if I want to get down a little bit deeper, I'll use the 2.5. But I found a lot of the shad up in the, up in the rivers on the flats, and they're actually balled up. And every once in a while, you'll, you know, you'll see a feed out there. If there's any kind of structure... Uh, any kind of lay downs or stops, you want to throw that crankbait around that and bounce it off of it. If not, just watch for them uh, balls of shad. They'll be in about three foot diameter circles. They're kind of schooled up. And what I'm doing is I'm just running the crankbait around them and underneath them. And a lot of times they'll be one or two cast lengths out off the bank, but it'll only be six to eight foot deep up on those uh, river flats. And, the, you know, the shad up there, I'm seeing a thread fin, which is about two, two and a half inches, which these crankbaits are matching just about right. Now, those are the same areas where I'm getting bit shallow. It was on the edges of them flats where there's a little bit of wood cover and buck brush up on the bank. But like I say, the crankbait bite's probably been a little bit better for me up there in that real shallow water than the flipping bite has. And I've also been throwing a frog a little bit up underneath some of the willow trees and back in some of the debris and I'm getting as many frog bites as I am uh, flipping bites. Now out on, the, out on the main lake you know the drop shot bite has actually picked up a little bit and I think the uh, the football jig has been a little bit more consistent. And last few days it seems like the depth I've had to key on has been anywhere from about 22 to as deep as 28 foot. And what I've been throwing is, uh, this is a, a pig sticker. It's, it's called a, a pig rig. It's a football head with a split ring and a hook in it. It's kind of the same thing as like uh, Gene LaRue makes the, the Biffle hard head. It's kind of the same principle. And what I've got on here is a five inch uh, Yamamoto Cinco, a watermelon purple. Another one that's been working good is a is a green pumpkin, or it's a watermelon black with red flake. And I'm throwing this the same place I'm throwing a football jig. And what I've been throwing for the football jig is a, a PBJ 
It's kind of hard to be a uh, green pumpkin with a little purple in it. And I've been using a Zoom uh, speed crawl for the trailer. And like I said, I've been throwing this 22 to 26, 28 feet. Some of the fish are coming out of brush piles, but most of them uh, just relate more to the rock changes on main lake and secondary points. Any place where you got a, like a channel on one side where you got a little bit deeper water. And a lot of the brush piles that I've been fishing have been the, the conservation brush piles that they've set. And another thing that will also work, I haven't done too much on the deep crankbait, but I am throwing a Texas rig worm, either a 9 or 10 inch, like a ribbon tail worm or a ring worm is a, a 9 inch lucky strike, plum, but like a, like a zoom old monster will work, and I've been throwing it on a, a half ounce weight if I'm getting it down in them brush piles that are around 20 foot deep, so I get the bait down there and, and, and work it through it. But for the most part, the fish, you know, I don't think there's much of a thermal climb. The fish are really scattered. You can catch them from two feet and you can probably catch them out in 40 or 50 foot. Now, that, you know, with the, the shad starting to school up on a lot of them river flats, I think some things that may start coming into play will be a spinner bait, you know, slow rolling underneath some of this bait, and even in the center of the creeks up in the river arms. You might have to drop that spinner bait down to 10 or 15 foot. Uh, that's something we'll get into a little bit more next week. But another thing I've thrown in my boat, I think it's getting close to time to work, and I put my Alabama rigs back in. With a lot of the shad on the move like that, I think it's time to start getting out on some of them a uh, little bit deeper drops over the deeper trees and try that A-rig some. Now, as far as my topwater bite, uh, you know, I've still got a topwater rigged up, you know, on the boat at all times. I haven't seen very much topwater action. It's been a little bit in the morning, not too much throughout the day. But, uh, you know, I pretty much keep one on the deck till that water gets down into the 60s. I mean, I've always got one handy in case the fish start schooling. But it looks like the weather's going to be real nice. It's going to lake level, like I say, it's, it's right down at 917. And I think they're going to keep it... You know, right at 916 and a half to 917, looks like they're slowing the generation down. So, you know, things are going to start to stable out and the fishing should get even a little bit better. But, you know, you're looking at, at fall patterns, which is typically where the fish tend to scatter all over the place. So, till next week, uh, good luck, good fishing.